Gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back to the shop. I got a mitt full of ratchets. What come from Mac Tools, Fap Off, all creeds and colors. We are going to do the old destructor routine. Prior, however, we got to get this thing shimmed up to where we can actually confidently say what the hell is going on. And there ain't no time to spare on account of that red and black Mackinac homunculus with the reek and breath of his provenance. Apparently 30 pieces of silver aren't enough to fill his tin cup. Milk toast, always got to have more and happy to mow somebody else's lawn to get it. I gently remind you, fellow parishioners, that you can't spell wanton destruction without bumblefuckery. Leastwise, <laughs> not here in the Empire of Dirt. To the clapped out Bridgeport milling machine. I ever tell you about the time I became a man? <laughs> no, not that time. It's when I clapped eyes on this beautiful Bonnie rig 110th unit of 1987 clapped right out i saved her from the they while well, the old nag that she is saved her from the glue factory and uh she's got a back to prove it the the saddle on this thing just wallered right out so guys will you know real machinists would never use this machine in a million years and a lot of times when i'm doing hard stuff i go the wrong direction this way that's because the saddle is fucking wallered out and uh, especially on hard stuff, we're using Kunstain Tongue Glide, the Paragon of Materials, real real hard, doesn't like the chatter so much. So that is why I run it this way. Don't, don't be incensed at the comments by real machinists that I'm doing it the wrong way because they ain't ever used a beautifully crapped out, pardon my French, clapped out Bridgeport milling machine. Fuck ya. Sometimes I amaze even myself. Too bad it's the wrong fucking size. I'm loose. Holy fuck. Just about got summer teeth. We're going to do it a different way here. And take a new direction as it were. I'm going to use the queen of machine tools. It's the only machine tool that can replicate itself. Well, at the hands of an experienced operator. <laughs> Not me. The thing about this is, well, the zombie apocalypse is coming. You're going to want to know a guy with a lathe at the very least. Because super, super useful. I'm your man. We're going to center drill this. And then we're going to through drill it three eighths. And then we're going to try broaching it. Now it is a deep, deep broach. So we might come in from the other side around halfway with a bigger drill so that the broach doesn't have to work all the way through this big slug here.
If and you're the sensitive type, or even the sensible type, you're going to want to look away. Another coffin nail for the old BP. thing is about this old iron, it's just like a, a D8 cat. It thrives on abuse and neglect. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. I'll put her in the back here. This is a broaching tool, what I made years ago, and I, I actually showed a Vigeo. I don't know if it's still up, but... I think back then it was just me and my mom watching, so you probably missed it. But I'll show you the particulars if in this work and doesn't kill us all. It is. We're broaching that. And it's just taking tiny little bites each time. And because we got a we got a conical grind here, or a hemispherical grind here. And then we've ground some relief in here enough to allow us to weave a wobble in there. Each time around, it's just taking a tiny bite, moving a bit of material towards the center. Now, commercially, these things are pricey as hell, but you make them on your own, and they work, yeah, about as well as you see here. Not tea bag, if I do smell so myself. I went back through there with the 3 8 and she's a little bit tight. First time tight, second time all right. But I'll show you a trick What for and bigger than that. A little detail on the grind because the grinding wheel is round. If you just turn it around, you'll get a hemispherical grind. What's well, good enough to make a chip, fair chip come out of that. Now we'll heat this up, do the same thing. She's hotter than a $2 pistol and took a fair chip out of her while. So now that should have plenty of clearance to slide in easy. Your old pal Bumblefuck still got a couple surprises left in him, huh? <laughs> Not all good looks and witty repartee. Got it where it counts. Big shoes, big feet, you know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Stuck. That there is the clock for Dolly. So. Now we got the torque wrench set on and at the bottom of the scale it's going to be a little bit more inaccurate but we got this set for 100 foot pounds which is equivalent according to the chart to 520 psi on the gauge that's of course the effective area of the piston times that pressure gives the force times that lever arm gives you the torque of 100 foot pounds cordac Well, surprisingly accurate, even at the low end. Clicked over right at 500, or depending on the parallax here, maybe a little bit over 500. So we're dead nuts on the money there. Now I tweaked her up to 192, which should be 1,000 foot-pounds. And we'll just back that up. We're, what we're doing here, you see what's going on, is this is full of air, so it's acting like a bit of a cushion almost an accumulator which is nice so that uh, we don't get too many pressure spikes messing up our reading and she's getting tight there oh. it's uh, pulling me along I'm sort of out of position I gotta get a better purchase on this and ah, ah. there we go fucking A works perfect 192 foot-pounds on this clicked over at 1,000 on the dot. Okay, let's see where she breaks A little fast oh. One hundred and ninety two foot-pounds Coming up to pressure here, 1500 should crack any time. There's almost 300 foot pounds. Holy shit. Fuck me. I'm getting away from this fucking thing. Now we see it's yielding. Something's yielding. Could be the Busted. There we go, classic torsional failure. You got the swirly 
toilet bowl routine of that, that shear failure. 288 foot-pounds this took. I was guessing, I think I said it out loud. <laughs> I was guessing between 250 and 300 and uh, looks like in this case, I guessed right. The material itself doesn't look too skookum, but nice grain structure on it. No big grains on there, what you want. Little tiny, tiny grains, dull gray as well. Indicative of high carbon. So we know it works, it's working. And it's uh, surprisingly accurate, even at the low end, which I, I thought we'd be off by quite a bit at the low end, but quite frankly, more than good enough for the girls I go out with. Thanks for watching. Keep your deck in advice.